Hey there, welcome to a new video. This time I will show you how to create a content report using two different tools. The first one will be using Looker, which is a tool from Google, and the second option will be to build your content report using HubSpot. If you're new here, I'm Andrea and I'm a content strategist at School of Content. I upload videos on content marketing, strategy and management every week. So if you want to improve your content strategy knowledge, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel to be notified when I add new content. Okay, let's get started. I will start with the report build in Looker. You can already see on my screen that I have a basic report and it includes four pages. On the left sidebar, you can see the overview page, the on-site data overview page, on-site data page performance, and off-site data overview page. Each of these pages is added by going to page and add new. So if you want to split your reporting differently, for example, you want to track page performance and then conversions and then user behavior in different tabs, you can add different pages for that. However, before you can track anything or add any sort of data here, you need to add your data sources. So for that, you're going to go to Add Data and select the data sources that you want to link. For this particular report, I chose Google Analytics because that's the main reporting tool that I use for my website and also Search Console. This is also a tool from Google and it shows you the offsite performance. So things like impressions, clicks, the average position of your pages based on the keywords they rank for, as well as the click-through rates. I will not add the sources again because I've already linked them, but I will show you where you can find them. So on the left sidebar, you have the pages of the report or different tabs. Then at the top, you have the options for customizing your report. And on the right sidebar, you have the options for seeing or connecting new data sources, adding properties and personalizing this table with data, and then adding filters. So I'm going to now turn this off to see that the report is then the main thing that you see on the screen. And if I add them back, data sources, properties, filters I won't add yet because I don't need it yet, but let's start with the data sources. As you can see here, I've linked the Google Search Console data and the GA4 data stream. You can also add Google Sheet documents or Excel tables or so on if you have other data sources. For example, let's say that you are running some LinkedIn campaigns and you want to export the data in CSV format or in Excel format and just upload it here. You could do that. Okay, now let's look at the main report. In the first tab, the overview tab, I want to have the overview of what happens on site, off site, the trends regarding the active users, acquisition channels and sources, the source and medium that the users come from, and then the different countries. This is enough to give me the big picture overview. And of course, you might ask, why do we need to create this report in Looker? Why not just use Google Analytics, for example? And of course, you can do that. The advantage of Looker is that you can connect a lot more data sources, like I said. So you bring all your data in one overview or in one place. In order to add all these numbers and all these reporting data here, you need to use the options at the top. So you can add data sources, like I said. You can add charts. And this will look familiar to you because they are similar to what you find in other Google tools. You can add different visualizations, controls, for example, filters, lists, checkboxes, and so on. And you can personalize your report with things like URLs, images, text, shapes, and so on. I will first walk you through the overview page, then show you what type of data I collect on the other two pages. And last, I will build this page in real time, the offsite data overview, so that you can see how I do it from scratch. So on the overview page, first I have the summary of on-site data, and I'm looking at total users, new users, sessions, engaged sessions, page views per user, and engagement time. 
I look at these numbers because it helps me understand if my content is performing well or not. At the top, you can see that I'm using the start date 1st of January and end date today. And the data source that I'm using is the Google Analytics property. You see that when I click one of these controls, some options open in the right sidebar. And you can personalize, for example, the time interval by going here and selecting, let's say, include the last 28 days or yesterday or whatever you want to add. Next, if we look at the number of total users, you see that I'm pulling data from the GA4 property here in data source. Then the metric that I'm using is total users. And if you click here, you can select whatever metric you want from the GA4 property. The default date range is auto, so it takes the date range from the top of the report. And I'm not using any filter. I am comparing the number with the previous period just because I want to see if I'm doing better or worse than the previous date range. And that is all that I'm doing for this particular number. I use the same setup for user sessions and so on. Now, one important thing to know is that each of the elements that you see here, so this border, for example, then the title or the text here, as well as this small text here, they are all elements added by using the controls at the top. For example, let's say that I want to add another section that uses a similar structure with this one. And I want to add it here at the bottom of this report. I don't really have enough space to do that yet. So I'm going to go to theme and layout, click layout, and then go here to canvas size and increase the height of, of the canvas. And let's put it on much bigger one so that I can add some extra stuff at the bottom. Okay, now if I scroll down, you see that I have a lot of empty space at the bottom of the report. First, I'm going to click here to group them. Then I will click to copy this. And then I would go here and click to paste it, but you will see that it will paste it on top of your current section. So I'll go and drag it in the position where I want to have this section and align it with everything so that it looks good. And now I can personalize this section and add different data here. Let's say that I want to have an overview of conversions. This will, of course, be on-site data, so I can remove this. I don't want to report on impressions anymore. Instead, I'm going to search for conversions. For that, first I need to change the source and select analytics instead of search console. And then I can go here in metrics and type conversions. And then you see that the report is already personalized. So I have now the conversions for the time interval that I'm using in this report. I can move this text so that it looks less crowded. And now I have the conversions versus the previous period. Let's do the same with events. So instead of reporting here on clicks, I want to report on events. And events can be anything like a button click or a download or scrolling to see more than half of a page or watching more than half of a video and so on. Those are the events that you have set up in Google Analytics, while conversions are the events that you mark as conversions. So for example, I will not mark as a conversion an event that's a button click but I will mark as a conversion a form submission or a download of a white paper, for example. So let's personalize this now to show events. Again, the first thing that I'm doing is to adjust the data source. I will take analytics and instead of views, I want to report on events. And now you can see that the number is already updated. I want to take this small text here, the versus previous period, and create a duplicate and then move it there. And now I have my event count compared to the previous period. I can delete the click through rate. I don't need to see that here. And I can also delete the average position. So now I also have in the overview table, the conversion numbers 
for this period compared to the previous one. For each of these reports, if you want to personalize them, you can just click on the report. You can make it smaller or bigger here. You can click this to show the properties if you have the right sidebar minimized or closed. So when you click here, it will open this again. And if you would want, for example, to add a filter, you could click here on the filter bar and you see that at the top now you have the option to add a quick filter. If you want to add new elements and brand your report, you can go here to theme and layout and select a layout or a theme and customize it, similarly to how you do in Google Slides with the slides. And if you want to add your logo somewhere, you can come here at the top and just click image and add the logo. Now I have a logo here that I can just make a bit smaller. That's too small, maybe a bit bigger. Okay, I'm going to add it there and then move the text a little bit. And now it looks a little bit better. Now I can go and copy the logo to the other pages as well. I'm just pasting it there in place. And now let's look at what we have in the other pages. So first, the on-site data. This is very similar to what you see in Google Analytics, but like I said, it's just better and easier if you have all your data in one place, so both on-site and off-site data. So what I have here is the traffic sources. Again, you see that for me, direct and Google organic search are the best traffic sources in this period. Then I have the top events, the landing pages, because I want to see which content performs the best. And for landing pages, I look at the number of users, sessions, session duration, views, and bounce rate. And then I have the conversions per channel. You see here that I have, again, organic search as the best converting channel, and then per page. If you want to personalize any of these tables, you can just click here on this icon. You see the properties now on the right sidebar. And you see that I'm reporting as a dimension on events. And I'm using metrics such as event count, which is here the first column, events, the second column, and active users, the third column. If I go here on the report itself, I can make these columns bigger or smaller. And if I want to change the order, I can do it by just moving this here on the right sidebar and you see that now active users are in the middle. I will undo that. But this is how easy you can customize and just personalize your local reports. Now on the on-site page performance tab, I'm looking again at the same things that you saw here with page performance. But here I was using the landing page and query string. Uh, and I have a bit less data, so fewer metrics that I look at, while here I'm looking at numbers in more detail. And here I also added the events and the conversions. For the rest, I just have the list of content pages so that I have the big picture overview in one page. Finally, let's build the offsite data. What I want to add here is actually a view that's similar to this, so I'm going to just copy this table, and I will come here and paste it. But instead of seeing the detailed numbers of on page metrics, I actually want to see the off site metrics. So impressions, clicks, click through rate, and average position. So here I'm going to go to data source and select Search Console instead of Analytics. And I don't want to report on the Google property. Instead, I'm going to click here and you see that it shows me options. I want to choose landing page. And then I have here the metrics. So what can I see for landing pages? But first, let's make this column a bit bigger to see the actual page names, all of them. And I actually don't need to see the Google property, so let's remove it to have more space. And I also don't need duplicate numbers here, so I just want to see impressions, clicks, click-through rate, and average position. And now I can resize. And you see that we have now a good 
overview of the performance of each page. However, for offsite metrics, I also want to know the performance of the query. So not just pages, but also the keywords that people find me for. So I'm gonna first make sure I have enough space to add another report here. That looks good. And now let's copy this again and paste it at the bottom. And the only thing to do here is to change from landing page to query. I'm using exactly the same type of reporting, the same numbers, and you see that now I can easily see the keywords that people find me for, how many impressions they have, clicks, and so on. Okay, now one more thing to do here. I want to have a little title so that I know what exactly this report is about. So first, let's move this one a little bit lower and the other one as well. And I'm going to go to one of the other pages where I had the title and I will just copy this one. And the first one will be page metrics of site. Let's make it a bit bigger. And the second one will be query metrics. And I will move the table a little bit higher. Okay, this now looks good enough. If you wanna zoom in and out, you can do it here. Let's put it to fit all and to fit the width if you wanna go back to the bigger view. And that's it. Now you can easily evaluate the performance of your content, see everything in one beautiful report. Now let's move over to HubSpot and try to build a report there as well. So for this tutorial, I'm using a free version of HubSpot. That means that not all the things here in reporting will be available. However, we will be able to build a dashboard. So let's do that now. If you come here to reporting and dashboards, you will see that it asks if you want to create a, a dashboard from scratch or if you want to start with a template. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will start with a template and I will choose the marketing channel performance because this, this gives me enough information as a starting point. I will leave all these options as they are and go here and click next. I want it to be visible to everyone. Everyone can view and edit and I will just click on create the dashboard. Now click here to go to your dashboard. And you start to see that already the reports are populated for you. So new visitor sessions, the total number by day with the source breakdown, contacts with most recently created source and so on. So let me first walk you through the full overview and then we will personalize or create a new report. The first thing here is the new visitor sessions. And you see that the breakdown is by source, paid, direct, organic search, referrals, and so on. Then we have the contacts also by source. Landing page submissions. I don't use landing pages on my website that are built in HubSpot. So actually I can come here and remove this from the dashboard. I didn't send any email in the last 30 days. So I'm gonna click here on view and filter and select a different date range so that I can see some numbers. Okay, now we have some numbers. So these are the emails that I've sent in the previous year. Now, form submission totals, ad clicks. I haven't run any paid campaign in the last one year, not for this account. Emails, I need again to personalize here the date range. So let's go to filters and select the full year. Social interactions, here you would see the numbers from your social platforms. If you have, for example, LinkedIn or Facebook connected with HubSpot, and you are using HubSpot to schedule your posts, but I'm not doing that, so I can remove this report. And I always click remove and not delete because I do want to have the report in my library of reports, but I just don't want to use it in this dashboard. Then we have new conversion from ads. As I said, I didn't yet run any paid campaign, but I want to keep the report here. And the social clicks, I will keep it for when I do the paid ads. Now, if I want to add a new report here at the bottom, I'm going to go and click add report. And I can do it from saved reports or to create a new one. Let's click create a new report. I'm going to look for a report that shows me the type of data. And you see here the contacts created by first conversion. So let's click this one. 
it gives me now the preview. And here at the bottom, I can click Save. And then it asks me if I want to add this report to an existing dashboard or to a new dashboard. I will add it to this marketing channel performance dashboard. Save and add. And now if I click to go to the dashboard, you will see that the report has been added here at the bottom. So now I can easily see how many contacts or how many conversions I get from each content page. I also want to have this overview of the website visits, new contacts and new customers. So I'm going to click this report as well, save and add it to the same dashboard. Now let's go to the dashboard and you see that it's been added here as well, but I actually want to see this at the top of the dashboard as one of the first reports. So I can just drag and drop it wherever I want to move it. I will add it here at the top. So first the website performance, then the new visitors, then I want to see the contacts per source, form submissions, that is good. Then I want my conversions a bit higher. So let's take first organic conversions, then paid conversions, and then I have the email performance and social and paid performance that is good enough so now if you go back to your dashboard and you click here at the top you can see that you can select from different dashboards of course i only have now but i would have the overview here and i can create a new dashboard at the top or clone this one or share it by url or by email i hope this was useful please like the video and subscribe to my channel to get notified when i add new content Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.